Hi, I hope it's working and you can hear me well. Um, I also hope you're doing fine. I understand these are stressful times for all of us. So I'm making this video to try and help you uh, get a better grasp of the uh, material, especially I'm going to cover the article uh, about at midnight I'll take her soul. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see um, the slides. Uh, this is uh, part of the slides I already posted on Canvas. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, some things we have to remember. The movie At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul is part of a trilogy. The first movie, I have my thing here to cheat. The first movie is At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul that we watched it and it was released in 1964. The second movie is This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse. And it was released in 1967 and because the director have had uh, numerous, uh, numerous conflicts with the Brazilian dictatorship, he could not finish this trilogy um, as he intended to. And the last movie was only released in 2008, and it's titled The Embodiment of Evil. So, Basically, in the trilogy, we have Coffin Joe's quest to find the woman that will give him the perfect son, right? So, although initially it might be uh, difficult or challenging, better challenging, better word, uh, challenging to see the relationship between the movie and the dictatorship, what happens is that in these movies, uh, the director uh, shocks the audience, the film techniques, the plot. Uh, there is a radical agenda behind it because the uh, Coffin, Coffin Joe, the character, he actually mimics all the human rights abuses that were committed, uh, committed under the dictatorship by state agents. So Coffin Joe is seen many times uh, torturing people, uh, murdering people, uh, kidnapping. So he did to his victims what the dictatorship did to the subversives or perceived subversives. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about it of uh, what defined subversives uh, to, uh, and how people were targeted, how and why. So going to the movie, in the beginning of the movie, Coffin Joe has this monologue in which he says, what is life? It's the beginning of death. What is death? It's the, the end of life. What is existence? It's the continuity of blood. What is blood? It's the reason to exist. So this set the, the whole idea for his quest, for Coffin Joe, the character. Uh, humans are, bodies are containers of blood. And because death, is something we cannot run away from. It's the only um, certainty <laughs> that we have in life. The only way to uh, kind of counter or overcome this inevitable end is to pass on your bloodline. In the article, uh, Brazilian Horrors Past and Present, José Mujica Marins, and politics as reproductive futurism, uh, Charles St. George argues that despite the radical agenda at work 
in Coffin Joe's trilogy, what happens is that he uh, uses the same rhetoric, the same reasoning as the dictatorship that is based on reproductive futurism. This is a concept that was first used by Lee Edelman uh, that says that political legitimacy is contingent on reproduction. So the political legitimacy comes for the groups that can reproduce themselves. And this is what the dictatorship tried to prevent the leftists and subversives from doing by killing them, by cleansing the country of the people who did not uh, obey the, the, the rules and didn't um, adapt to the ideology of the regime. Uh, it's also related to a concept called chrononormativity that was proposed by Elizabeth Freeman, uh, Freeman. And this is related to some benchmarks of adult life. So basically, uh, adults, it's expected, especially in very heteronormative cultures, that once you are an adult, you will eventually get married. So the first benchmark is marriage, okay? And after a couple gets married, they are expected to have children. So the second benchmark is parenthood. And given that this is a heteronormative uh, society, your children are also expected to be heterosexual and to have children. So the third benchmark would be grandparenthood. So this is basically the ideology behind uh, the quest of Coffin Joe to find a woman to give him the perfect son. It's also important to remember that uh, the Brazilian dictatorship was very Catholic, although we are going to see that uh, the Catholic Church was not a homogeneous group in their relation with the dictatorship. And we had some um, progressive uh, priests that were against, openly against the dictatorship and uh, adapt, adopted a different ideology that's called theology of liberation, but this is for the future. So uh, anyways, the Catholic Church supported the coup d'etat and supported the dictatorship in Brazil in name uh, for the sake of a decency, a moral and traditions of the Brazilian people. Uh, and this idea of morality and decency is also related to this heteronormative uh, reproductive futurism and chrononormativity concepts because once you are having intercourse <laughs> uh, to reproduce, you ascribe your sexual desire a uh, morality, a different meaning other than just uh, sexual perversion, right? So that's basically what happened in the movies and in, in the trilogy and in the Brazilian dictatorship. I hope it has clarified uh, these concepts for you. Uh, so I encourage you to read the paper. If you have uh, any questions, shoot me an email. And if you wanna give me feedback, on the quality of the video, please feel welcome to. Uh, it is a first for me, so I hope the audio isn't too bad. And uh, keep safe, wash your hands, and don't hoard all the toilet paper. Bye.